Our Earth's oceans are vast. They cover approximately two-thirds of the surface area of our planet and extend much deeper than the height of the tallest mountain. To make understanding the oceans more manageable, scientists have organized the ocean into various zones. This lesson will look at vertical zones, or the different zones found as you move from the surface of the water to the ocean floor, and horizontal zones, the different zones found moving from shore outward. Let's begin with the horizontal ocean zones that are found as you move from land out into the ocean. The first horizontal zone we will look at is the littoral zone. It may also be referred to as the coastal zone or intertidal zone. The littoral zone includes the area between high tide and low tide. During high tide, this zone is covered in ocean water for many hours. It is then exposed to the air for many hours during low tide. The organisms that live in the littoral zone have adapted to both extremes. The littoral zone encompasses a wide variety of habitats, including tide pools, beaches, and inlets. The second horizontal zone is the pelagic zone which includes any area from the low tide mark into the open ocean. In other words, it is the area that remains covered in water. The pelagic zone is divided into two subzones, the neuretic zone and the oceanic zone. The neuretic zone lies over the continental shelf, is penetrated by sunlight, and only reaches a depth of about 600 feet. Here you will find coral reefs and other coastal habitats. The oceanic zone extends over deeper water past the continental shelf. Vertical zones play an important role in the oceanic zone. Habitats vary from that of the open ocean to the ocean depths. Now let's examine the vertical zones of the ocean. These are broken up into layers that are distinguished by the amount of light received from the sun, its depth, and the amount of pressure found in the zone. Imagine you enter a small submarine getting ready to explore the ocean. The submarine initially floats on the surface of the water. The ocean's surface, or neustic zone, is a thin film produced by surface tension. Your submarine begins its descent and submerges. You have now entered the epipelagic zone, which reaches from the surface down to about 500 feet. Together, the neustic and epipelagic zones make up the euphotic light zone, or sunlit zone. This part of the ocean is penetrated by enough sunlight for photosynthesis to occur. Plants can grow and an abundance of fish and other marine mammals live in the euphotic light zone. The environment begins to dim dramatically as your submarine drops below 500 feet. You become grateful for the protection of the submarine since pressure increases to an amount you could not tolerate without it. This ocean zone is known as the mesopelagic zone. It reaches from 500 to 3,280 feet below the surface. It is also called the dysphotic light zone or twilight zone. In this part of the ocean, a small amount of sunlight filters down, but not enough to sustain plant life. Animals that live in the dysphotic light zone must be able to endure the cold, dark waters and increased pressure. As your submarine continues to descend, you will go through three more vertical layers of ocean, differentiated by temperature and pressure thresholds. The bathypelagic zone, between 3,280 and 13,000 feet below the surface. The abyssopelagic zone, between 13,000 and 20,000 feet below the surface. And the hadal zone, between 20,000 and 35,000 feet below the surface. Together, these three zones make up the aphotic light zone, or midnight zone. No sunlight reaches this part of the ocean. It is very cold and completely dark. The pressure here reaches two tons per square inch. Scientists used to believe no life could exist here, but now we know life can persist even in these extreme conditions. In fact, some species of tube worms thrive even in the deepest trenches of the ocean. The oceans of our planet have been organized into zones to make understanding more manageable. Two ways oceanic zones are classified are by vertical zones, the different zones found as you move from the surface of the water to the ocean floor, and horizontal zones, the different zones found moving from shore outward. The horizontal zones include littoral zone, the area between high tide and low tide, and pelagic zone, the area from the low tide marks out into the open ocean. The pelagic zone includes two subzones. The neuretic zone is part of the pelagic zone over the continental shelf, 
and the oceanic zone is the part of the pelagic zone extending over the deeper waters of the ocean. Once you pass the continental shelf, the vertical zones play a more important role in understanding the ocean. The deeper you go, the less sunlight and the greater the hydrostatic pressure. These vertical zones include euphotic light zone. This is the area where plants can photosynthesize and grow. It is made up of two depth zones, the neustic zone, which is the surface of the ocean, and the epipelagic zone, which is from the surface to a depth of 500 feet. The dysphotic light zone, this area does not have enough light for plants to grow. It consists of one depth zone, the mesopelagic zone, which is from 500 to 3,280 feet below the surface. And the aphotic light zone, this is the part of the ocean with no sunlight. It is made up of three depth zones. The bathypelagic zone is between 3,280 and 13,000 feet below the surface. The abyssopelagic zone is between 13,000 and 20,000 feet, and the hadal zone is between 20,000 and 35,000 feet below the surface.